Okay, we're gonna put our walking building into footage now. Let's make a new tab for motion tracking. Open. Right here. Hit set scene frames in prefetch. We're gonna motion track this. So let's start by doing normalize and we'll change this to perspective. We'll go to track, detect features, and we'll make sure that these are, these are what I want for the settings. And we'll do control T to track forwards. Okay, and now that we're at the end, we'll do it again. So track, detect features, and shift control T to track backwards. Okay, let's sort these by start frame. We're gonna go to cleanup and we want to filter out all the tracks that uh, lasted less than 10 frames. We'll delete those. Let's do a solve. Okay, so we have a crazy solve error right now, and that's because a lot of these tracks are really bad. So let's go to our graph here, and I'm hitting control and dragging my middle mouse button to change the view. I'm gonna click on these tracks that, um, that appear to be outliers, and I'm gonna see what they're doing. And we have a lot of tracks, so we don't need to be too conservative with what we delete. If we see something is behaving oddly, we're just gonna delete it. So I'm seeing some of them over here. I'm also gonna change this to not show disabled. I'm gonna keep the, f the last part of this and I'm just gonna delete the beginning by clicking this button. Again, with this one, you see how these tracks are moving with the people? We don't want that. So we're gonna delete anything that is tracked to a person. We just want to track static objects. Let's solve again. Okay, 38. Let's click keyframe and see if it has a suggestion. This is gonna automatically suggest two points to calculate the motion from instead of the default, which is just one in 30. Okay, so it picked 11 and 16, which is not a huge amount of motion. Let's go for one in 100. Okay, great, and now our solve error is almost one. So now that it's pretty low, I'm gonna go and sort these by error. And I'm gonna look at the ones with the highest error and see what they're doing. I'm also gonna take the focal length and refine that. 0.89. I also know that my camera has a focal length of 28. So I'm gonna enter that and take that off. I'm going to delete all the trackers that are in the distance. And I also don't trust any of these that are touching the water. I'm also going to start to delete any of these trackers that I see are doubled up. This is just what happens when you detect features from both sides of the timeline. Okay, now I'm just gonna go to clean. I'm just gonna delete everything that has an error above one by typing in by typing in one here. Delete those. Okay, and this is a good solve. So now we're gonna reconstruct this in 3D by selecting three of these points that are approximately a floor plane, 
let's hit this one. We'll do this one and we'll do this one. And we'll say floor. Oh, let's hit set up tracking scene first. And then we'll hit floor. And now, if we go back into our layout tab, let's turn on motion tracking and camera path. We can see we have our 3D scene with our tracking points here. I think this road is probably about the length of our walking house. I think that's about 25 feet. So let's actually go back here and we'll take two of these points that I think are about that width, like this. And we'll call this 25 feet, which it hates. So we'll say 8 meters. We'll say 8. So we'll say set scale. And now we're going to reposition this camera, which will take the world with it. And it's facing backwards, so let's put it over here. Uh, let's go back to our timeline. Just make sure that auto keyframe is off. I don't want our camera moving around during this. Okay, so you see how these aren't actually lined up with the camera? Our camera is the wrong dimension, so let's switch this to 1920 by 1080. There we go. Let's select more of these so we can see where we want this thing to go. I'm just selecting the different motion trackers that happen to be on our path. So we can see this is kind of the path that we want it to take. Let's take our camera and orient it so that will correspond to the house's movement. Let's make this a little smaller. Let's change this to 12. Yeah. Let's copy our keyframe so it doesn't stop moving. Make it even smaller. Let's go back to these. It's still a little too big. Let's make this 16. Beautiful. Let's leave pose mode. We'll scoot this forward a little bit. Copy and paste these a few times too. Okay, we're going to end this at 180. So, this is what our animation looks like. You can see the feet. Feet are sliding a little bit, and we can fix that if we refined our animation a little bit more, but for our purposes, this is what we're going to do. If we put this into render view right now, um, let's put this into transparent mode. You can see that we'll give this um, higher opacity. You can see this is missing a shadow. So what we're going to do is um, go into this ground and let's scale this up by 20. When we hit up the set tracking scene, this setup tracking scene, it automatically generates these collections and it gives us this ground plane that has been set to a shadow catcher. So that's great. I think this looks awesome. 
The one thing I want to change is I want to give it a color that more accurately matches this. Because what you'll notice is that if you take this off, it's just a white plane, which isn't quite accurate. So let's just give it a, let's say ground. And we're just going to use our, we're going to load our image. We're going to load our image into here and use the eyedropper to select this color. Let's make it a little bit rougher. And we can see what it's doing if we go to this. Let's take this light here, make it a sun lamp and it's a little hard to see in this photo, but this is at sunset. Let's put it here and match basically the fact that I filmed this around sunset. So let's lower the strength to about one. Maybe two. Maybe a little bit lower on the angle. And let's raise this to two so it's a little softer. Let's bring this back to one for the strength. I think we're just about ready to render. Here's what we want. We want the background collection to have just the ground and the light. We want this foreground to have the apartment. Um, these kits do not matter. Let's have the legs in here. And camera also does not matter. We're going to turn this back so it is hold out. That's what we want for that layer and the background layer. This will give us our shadow and it makes this by default this background is going to turn everything on but we want to turn off we want to turn off the ground item kit off with the roof items. We also want these to be indirect just like that. So this is how this one should look. Now go to the compositing tab. It automatically has a setup for this, but I don't really want to use this. We're going to turn off use nodes and we're just going to render these out as two layers. We're going to do, we're going to set this to multi-pass. We're going to do an open EXR multi-layer. If you do not want to deal with uh, using these files, feel free to just do PNG if you're new to rendering. But this is, I'm just showing you the way that I typically render. Set it to half and change this to DWAB. This will reduce our file size drastically. And let's make a render. Let's make a new folder and call it renders. And we'll say walking building version one. And give it the same name. I like to enable, for compositing purposes, I like to enable the um, in the foreground, the ambient occlusion. And now let's just render an image and see what it gives us. We can switch this too. Let's make this denoise. I have optics, which I'm gonna use. And I'm gonna only put this at 100. So this is what it gave us for our first render at 4,000 samples. We have our foreground, we have this ambient occlusion pass we have our background. I think that's perfect. So let's do another render at 100 samples and see if it's up to par. This looks good. I, see, I cannot even tell a difference between these. So let's start rendering that. Okay, so it looks like everything's rendered. 
Yay. We're gonna open After Effects and put the layers together. Sort of like um, a lasagna. We're gonna import our open EXR sequence. Let's make a new project. Um, we, we need two effects. We need the extractor and we need open color IO. Let's set this to our background. Oh, and we also need to import our plate, of course. Let's put that in the background. Okay. Now we have our walking building, right? Actually, we don't need open color. Let's do a utility. Let's do color profile converter. And we're gonna do linearize input. Great. Now we're gonna duplicate this. We're gonna do the foreground. Okay, I think this should be a little more blue. So I'm gonna add a Lumetri color. I'm just gonna do, I'm gonna use these colors right here to set the white balance. So I'm gonna do the opposite, negative. Yeah, that's looking good. Okay, and let's let's bring in that ambient occlusion pass. Remember this guy? Let's use that as a, and we'll use the um, the alpha from the foreground. And oh, important on these extractors, don't forget to unmolt. Very crucial. And let's set this to multiply. Let's set this to like 20. I just want a little bit. Maybe like 30. Okay, and that's about it. Oh, we have one more thing we need to fix. We need to make sure that these are the same frame rate. See how our footage came in at 24? Go to interpret footage, set that to 29.97. We'll do the same thing for our comp. 29.97, just to match our footage. Now it won't drift as badly. And look at that. We got a walking building that's only drifting a little bit. We did that from scratch, pretty cool, right? Okay, nice. I'm Danny Behar, thank you for watching, and let me know, if you make something cool with this, uh, send it to me somehow, send it to me. Tag me on social media.